Okay, this is uh, officially our last lecture. I mean, not last class, the last uh, <coughs> class that I give a lecture. There will be another lecture, of course, for uh, as a makeup class, but after April the 3rd, I will let you know the exact date. So I um, have about 15 to 20 minutes, and uh, <coughs> I'm going to just talk about bagging. So we learned about boosting in the uh, previous lecture. Uh, in, in boosting, we learned that we can uh, take a weak classifier and boost it to, to a pretty good classifier. Bagging, which is uh, The short form of bootstrap aggregation is a method uh, which is a meta method. It's not a classification technique. It's a method that you can apply on any classifier. And it's used mainly to reduce the variability of classifier. So there are, you have some classification method. You have some models that they have high variation. Three is one of those. It means that if you apply any, actually any high, uh, any method with high complexity has the same problem. You know, if you apply it many times, you may get a variety of answers. So it, it, that's in contrast with low complexity models that ha they have high bias but low variance. But these methods have a low bias but high variance. And three is one of those. So bagging is basically used to reduce to use variability of classifier. So what, what basically we do in uh, bagging is to aggregate the result of a classifier applied many times on data. So you are given a data set as usual in this form. Okay. Uh, in bagging, we are going to take M bootstrap sample. So what do we mean by M bootstrap samples? You know, uh, you have a data set in general, you know, regardless of the, the problem of bagging. You have a data set, and you don't know the distribution that this, this data set comes from. But these points are instances of that distribution. If you want to sample from that distribution, you can sample from these points. Okay, that's the, the main idea behind uh, bootstrap sampling. So you have n point here. I'm going to take a sample of these points, a subset of these points, I'm going to take a sample. The sample is going to be uniform with replacement. So uniformly, randomly, I choose one of the data points in this set, put it aside, replace it, randomly choose another point, put it aside, replace it, take another set. So take M bootstrap samples uniformly and with replacement. So basically I have M subset of this original set now. Their size is less than n, of course. So for each of these subsets, for each of these m bootstraps, I'm going to learn a classifier. So learn 
8j for each sample. So end of the day, I have M classifier. Each of these, cla these are not different classifiers. They're the same classifier. You are learning a tree. You have M samples of your data. You learn a tree on the first sample. You learn a tree on the second sample. You learn a tree on the third sample, and so on. End of the day, you have M model. You have M classifiers. Your final classifier is simply the aggregation a majority vote or uh, a, you know a average vote of all of these classifiers so the final classifier f is simply 1 over m sigma h j okay let's call this h the final classifier h is summation of these You know, for example, in a two-class uh, problem, if you have a binary classification, your h of x is 1 if 1 over m sigma j equal 1 to m h j x is greater than equal one half and zero otherwise okay so you simply aggregate the result of this class first that's it this is boost this is bagging okay so the error rate here is smaller I mean the the, the variance here is smaller than the original um, variance to see this, to see the reason that the variance is smaller, let's assume that uh, so suppose that each model make epsilon error, and suppose This epsilon is normal, but uh, standard normal. So if I look at this quantity, you know, before I look at the quantity, the uh, summation or the basically, you know, this quantity, epsilon i, epsilon i compared to this quantity epsilon i epsilon j this is variance this is covariance when we are talking about two different models so if I look at this quantity i j epsilon i epsilon j divided by 1 m squared then I can rewrite this simply and as this form. So when I consider all combination of two models, either epsilon i and epsilon j's are in a situation that the i is equal to j or they are in the situ situation that i is not equal to j. You know, this can be written in this form. Either they are the same or they are different. How many of them are the same? I have m, m of them, right? So, this is basically m variance because epsilon i epsilon i is variance. How many of them are different?
you know, you have M, you consider all possible cases. M of them are the same. How many cases are different? Yes? Yes, exactly. M times M minus them, M minus of them are different. And epsilon i, epsilon j, when they are different, it's covariance. So this quantity is basically 1 over M squared times M variance plus M times M minus 1 covariance, which is 1 over M variance, you know, if I multiply with the first term, plus M minus 1 over M covariance. You know, in the case that the models are correlated, Correlated in a sense that all of the classifiers that I learn make the same mistake. So if um, models are correlated, they make the same mistake. In this case, epsilon i and epsilon j are the same. So the covariance is variance in this case. So my models are not independent from each other. So if that's the case, this quantity is going to be 1 over m, v plus uh, m minus m, v, which is m, 1 minus m plus 1, v, which is 1 over uh, uh, let me see. So it's V minus MV minus V divided by M. So it is V. So it is V minus VM plus V, uh, sorry, minus V. over M, so it is V. So in the case that they are correlated, they are making the same mistake, the variance of one classifier was V. When we aggregate them, the variance is still V. Okay? But if they are uncorrelated, means if they are not making the same mistake, So if they're uncorrelated, then C goes to zero, means two models, they're not make, making the same mistake, they're independent from each other. So epsilon i, epsilon j, in the expectation would be zero. So what we have in this quantity is just one over m v. So if you have models that are uncorrelated, you're reducing the variance by the number of models that you aggregate. If you aggregate m models, the variance is m times less. But if they're uncorrelated, you're not going to do worse than the original model. It's as bad as what you started with, okay? This is the reason that the democracy work. Uh, you know, you're aggregating the vote of Everyone, if all of us make the same mistake, it's as bad as one of us make the decision. And if we are independent in making decision, then you know that the final result would be better. So uh, we talked about tree. We learned about tree. There is an algorithm. It's called random forest, which we then talk in details. Random forest, but I mean. Suppose that you are doing bagging for a tree, okay? 
if you do bagging for three, uh, all of these three are, are going to be mainly uh, correlated. So you are not going to, I mean, it's going to be better than one tree, definitely, but not significantly because they are not independent. So what they do is that when they have a data set d by n, so in bagging, we are usually taking a subset of data points. In addition to taking, taking a subset of data points, suppose that I take a subset of features. So I randomly choose a subset of points. I randomly choose a subset of features. I learn a tree. That's my H1. Then I choose a subset of points, subset of features, randomly. Learn another tree. And then at the end, I aggregate all of them. This is random forest. And random forest usually perform quite well. OK, so it's just an aggregation. Uh, You know, a simple example. Uh, this is, uh, you know, a data set, Fisherman. It's a classification problem. You can learn a tree. In this example, we learned 50 different trees, and we are aggregating them. In this axis, you can see the number of trees that has been learned. And here is uh, the, the error rate after aggregating them. So you can see that it, it drops significantly when you aggregate more models. So here is 50 models, and here is just one model. You know, it, it reduces significantly when you add them. OK, I don't have more time. I want to start the uh, presentation. So. Uh, is there any quick question that I can answer? Okay, thank you very much.